Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina. Today we're talking journal clubs. The dreaded journal club. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the most daunting thing that I was asked to do during my PhD and it sounds crazy because there's like a maximum of like 20 people in the room <laughs> and I've done a lot worse in terms of public speaking and larger numbers. But journal clubs are an integral part of sort of the collaboration of scientists and they bring together scientists to discuss a research paper that's relevant to their field. So it's usually a paper that's published recently or something controversial or has brought about sort of a new idea and what happens is the attendees are all asked to read the paper sort of a week in advance and there's usually one or two presenters who present the paper and if you're here I'm guessing you've been asked to present a paper and you are dreading it just like I did it's something that we're never really taught to do we're just told to attend these journal clubs which are really interesting at the time and then it's your turn to present and you're like how do I do this so hopefully by the end of today's video you'll be able to present any research article or research paper or review paper to a group of people at a journal club. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the main sections that you need to discuss, things to add, things to avoid, things to do, things not to do. And you know, although journal clubs are, like I said, something I really dread, uh, dreaded in the past, they do really help with your analytical skills, they help with your critical discussion, they help with praising an article, they help with all an academic debate, and that's really important to prepare you for your viva. And they also help with networking. There are people that I met at these journal clubs that I I didn't know that were working in the labs next to me or the buildings next to me in a similar topic and so even though they are really tedious at times and they're, they're not necessarily the most fun thing that I did during my PhD I do appreciate them in hindsight so I post every Wednesdays and Sundays so if you do want to see more from me then do press the subscribe button and leave me a comment and let me know what's one top tip that you'd provide to a newbie who's presenting their paper or a paper for the first time at a journal club what would you recommend them to do. Okay, so starting off with the introduction. So as soon as you say hi, welcome to today's journal club, the paper that we're presenting today is give the title and it is about, and you want to give a summary, you want to summarize that paper. This is not the same as the abstract, this is not kind of just summarizing the intro, the results and the discussion, this is not that. It's more kind of giving a synopsis, so this is what the paper is about in a couple of one or two sentences and this is kind of the background of the paper. You're not necessarily giving any like key results or discussing analyzing the paper it's just a matter of summarizing it remember that some people might have read it like a week ago and imagine how many papers that they read on a daily basis so just remind them of what it is that you're discussing today also some people don't read the papers um guilty so i think it's important to make sure that you're keeping your audience in mind when anything that you're saying just keep your audience in mind there's people that are going to have loads of knowledge and those that won't then you want to mention the authors so who are the people that publish this paper are they well known in this field is this a paper that has like kind of continued from a different research paper what are their affiliations you can quickly mention that if there's something that's striking or something that's interesting to note and is this the first paper of its kind is this the paper that's really important in the field and the authors have their experts in it and they've been working on it for ages and they've been able to do this thing and show that this works or doesn't or is it a paper that is maybe refuting or showing the opposing sort of argument to a researcher out there where does this stand and how the authors sort of how do they contribute to this information then you get into the juice so so far the introduction and the authors there's sort of just one slide each now you're getting on to the actual information so this is the hypothesis. So what is it that the paper set out to achieve? Are the research questions and the hypothesis, is it well constructed? And there's sort of four main components that any research questions should kind of stand out and mention. Firstly, what is the population? Who or what was studied? So this really depends, like I'm being quite general here, but it depends on what your paper is talking about. Who is it that's being studied or what it, what is it that's being studied? It should also mention what the intervention is. So what is it that's being tested? And again, I've got to be quite broad here here because I don't know what you guys are specifically looking at but is it looking at a drug is it looking at a knockdown is it looking at a genetic change like what is the thing that was actually being tested here then the control so what is the alternative comparison so for anything that's being tested it's being tested against something so again think of your hypothesis and what is it that they're mentioning that's being tested and the intervention and what is the comparison that's going to be made and then lastly what is the outcome that's being measured so are you looking at the length 
of something? Are you looking at the duration of something? Are you looking at the size of something? Are you looking at response rate, percentages? Like what is the actual outcome of that test that's being run? And that essentially makes a hypothesis. And that's what you want to mention when you first, you've summarized the paper now, and then you're gonna say, this is what the authors were interested in uh, defining and sort of looking at in this paper. Feel free to attack, can't say attack, but critique the hypothesis. Feel free to, you don't have to support this work. Don't forget that this work is not yours. Don't take it personally. Even if it's published in a high impact journal, let's say it's published in Nature, that doesn't mean that it's perfect. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have flaws and it can't be improved or things might couldn't have been done better. Don't be afraid to say the hypothesis was good, but it could have dated X, Y, Z. Ask yourself questions and also ask the audience questions as well. You can kind of leave questions in their mind so that they can answer them at the end or you can kind of help them kind of think about things as you discuss. Then you want to mention the evidence base. So what is the essentially the, the lit review or the background information? What is the base information knowledge that this paper is sort of standing on? And I'd highly recommend using diagrams or figures, images to kind of support your discussion here, particularly if you're looking at a sort of a pathway or a cell or something that, you know, needs a visual image. It breaks down the text as well. It's not just sort of text heavy. It's got a nice image there that you can kind of point to and show different regions. I definitely think figures here that you can have designed as well, by the way, they don't have to come from the paper itself. They really support your discussion throughout a journal presentation. But do make sure that you know your background material really well. If you are mentioning cell type or a drug that's been used or anything that's been used, you need to know the background really well. It's likely that they are going to ask you about structure, characteristics, phenotypes, just basic things that might not be in that paper. So do make sure that you've done sort of a bit of like background reading on that topic so you can answer those questions that someone else may genuinely just want to know. And as you're discussing this, you want to try to mention the gap in literature and the gap in knowledge which this paper was trying to sort of fit in and trying to fill. What existing knowledge is there out there already that supports this work but this work is now building up on top of? And again, remember, like I said earlier, your audience are not all on the same page. There might be a first year PhD student, there might be a shadowing master student, there might be a professor. You've got different levels of people so you do need to make sure that you're not kind of excessively using jargon or language that not everyone would understand. Obviously for the most part everyone there is going to be from a similar background but if you're talking about a very specific concept that you've looked through and you understand fully, not everyone in that room will understand it so just be sure to give that base conceptual understanding so everyone's on the same page. Then you want to mention the study design. Again like I said this differs depending on what kind of paper you have but if you had a paper where you were looking at a particular cell type and you did sort of maybe an in vivo and an in vitro study you can discuss what those study designs are why were they chosen justify them think about is there a better method they could have used you're really trying to be quite analytical here you're not just the point isn't just to kind of read off of the paper and just be descriptive you want to be very critical and analytical in the way that you're kind of describing think about any limitations any bias here is where you're really thinking outside of the box and you're kind of taking it a step forward from what's just been mentioned in the paper and again don't assume that people understand methods the way that you might have understood it after doing your research. If there's a method that's been used that's not that popular, you can quickly describe what that method, how it's used and why it might have been chosen in this particular study. Remember to always try to support the hypothesis. This study was chosen, this approach was chosen. Why? Try to constantly justify it as if you were justifying yourself. Remember, it isn't your work, but you do need to try to think about why a particular approach might have been taken. Then in kind of the same vein you want to discuss the methods and the methodology so again here you're talking about why a particular cell type was used why another cell type might not have been used and this paper is probably you know similarly aligned to your own research so you might have an understanding as to why a particular cell type or why a particular technique or method is used as opposed to another even though the other might seem like it's better or more, more advantageous actually that might be more expensive or more time consuming and that's something that you kind of want to discuss as you talk through this paper and I think here you also want to mention whether a method is appropriate or not again don't be afraid to critique it and say look 
you know, it could have been better to use this method, but actually the, the authors used this one and, you know, this is why I think they did, yet this method might have been better and it would have yielded better results. Or you can kind of give like a follow-up and say, actually, I think what would be nice is this is what they found, but actually they could have used this method and it would have given them more results or more clarity and kind of go on like that. And, and again, that just, that just it's not a test, it just shows your knowledge and it just shows how you're thinking outside the box. Then you want to talk about the results and this is sort of where you need to be quite selective. There will be maybe five, six, seven different results that are in a paper. You do not need to talk about all of them. You need to select the most appropriate paper uh, result that is the most impactful for showing what the results were and kind of for showing, proving the hypothesis, I guess, right or wrong or like supporting the conclusion essentially. If you could pick out, let's say, one or two results that really stand out, which ones would they be? It's not going to be a little Western blot that shows the knockdown work. That's irrelevant. We don't need to know that. What you want to show are results that really show strong correlations and that show strong differences and similarities and patterns and, and really make the reader say, ooh, that's interesting. Think of it like this. You want to present the minimum amount of data to support that conclusion. And that might sound a bit weird because it's a journal club and you're presenting this, this paper, but actually you, you probably have like 15, 20 minutes to present. You don't have that long. By the point, time you've got to the results, 10, 15, 20 minutes have, have passed. You don't have another 20 minutes to go through each and every result. You're going to bore people and you'll also take away from the excitement of that paper. So stick to the most sort of impressive result that has a discussion point and that you can kind of like use to conclude later. Make sure you're showing those results when you're presenting. Not everyone will have the paper in front of them. So put it up in the PowerPoint and make it really large. If you have to relabel, relabel. If you have to sort of re, I don't know, zoom or, or add colors or whatever to show certain things, then do it. It's really important that your audience is able to see what it is that you are actually describing. And then lastly, moving on to the discussion or the limitations. So you've shown the results, you've kind of asked a few questions in your mind, you've kind of linked to the hypothesis. And now this is where you're discussing, asking questions, thinking outside the box, thinking beyond this paper, thinking in the wider scope of the literature of the topic. Topic. Ask questions to your audience, ask them rhetorically a little bit, but also questions that will kind of make them think in a way that you kind of want them to think. You want to ask them questions that might get them talking about a particular result or talking about a particular interpretation. If there's something that could have been interpreted a bit differently, have that discussion. Is the significance not that significant, but actually with the change of the p-value, it might have been irrelevant. Is that something to discuss? They use a t-test or statistical analysis that is a bit questionable. Use that to discuss. Don't feel confused confronted by critical comments. You're going to get people that are going to say, oh, but blah, blah, blah. that's not your work. It's not for you to take personally and for you to feel like, oh, but I should have. No, this is a journal club. It's for you and for you all to discuss critically and appraise a particular article. It's not for you to take it personally. You can say, well, I think so and so, but actually I, I don't know. And that's completely okay. You're not supposed to know everything. You didn't do the study, but it's more for you to try to have that sort of academic, uh, professional discussion in, in a group. And lastly, I think I mentioned this earlier, but don't feel like you have to defend the authors. If you feel like something could have done better, if you feel like something isn't quite right or doesn't sit very well with you, then feel free to voice your opinion. One thing that I'd recommend actually is if you look for the paper on PubMed or Google Scholar, and if you look for who has cited that paper since, you'll actually find there might be interesting discussion points that you can use from those cited papers. Another paper that was published a few months later might say, well, actually this paper found this, but we don't think it's accurate because blah blah or we whatever whatever and ultimately you can use that to your advantage and say when I was doing my research and I was doing my reading I found that there are papers that have been published since this one and they do counteract or they do support or they whatever it is that you want to show or that paper shows and you can kind of discuss that and, and add that to the journal club discussion. So I hope that was helpful I hope that this helped with thinking about how to structure a journal club discussion and I had a request this video from one person so if you did see this and you got here i hope that you found it useful do let me know if you have any other suggestions for videos like this like i said leave me a comment and let me know what your best tip is for presenting a journal club paper it is very daunting but honestly once you pass and you've done it it's actually pretty enjoyable and you get to sit back and reap the rewards of sounding like you know what you talked about <laughs> i hope that you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next one bye